So Uday is a passionate AppSec, uh, DevSecOps guy who loves React.js, Firebase, JavaScript, and the No runtime. So he's going to talk to us today about security at the speed of DevOps. So feel free to take it away. Uh, is my screen visible at the Your moment? screen is visible and we can hear you perfectly. Right. Perfect. Uh, Jens, thank you for uh, taking your time on a Saturday. It's uh, really interesting to see that uh, while we stay at home, especially counting on a Saturday to come up is uh, really interesting for me. Uh, so before I jump ahead, I really uh, put, it some, put in some time to make sure that I got the right picture at, on the very first slide at least. That is to just give people that, hey, you know, actually apps are case stuff. It is uh, not for the faint hearted, you could say, but uh, you know, life is too short, so you need to enjoy your life. So I think uh, I like this logo that uh, OSP has created uh, for the cheat sheet uh, series project, which is uh, pretty uh, handy to look at and uh, talk about and uh, around uh, understand AppSec in general that it is actually tough. But uh, we are here today to debunk some of them and uh, there will also be a quick demo at the very end where I can uh, show you that these are some things that I do there are certain things that you can do to make yourself uh, look like a genius maybe, or you can just make your life easier, uh, I guess. So with that being said, uh, the, uh, the idea the topic idea is security at the speed of DevOps. So we have to understand first that security is always a catch up game. And there are many reasons behind that. And we will be looking at uh, some of those today. Uh, quickly about me, I work at Checkmarks. I'm a, a senior professional, service in, professional services engineer. I love Python, JavaScript, Firebase, Dota, Food, AppSec, whatnot. There are a few more things, of course. I like movies as well. Now, a uh, quick note of uh, thanks to Imran, who reached out to me recently. And uh, he has uh, a practical dev DevSecOps training uh, that he runs. And there is a, a currently a discount if you're looking to upskill yourself. Uh, I may jump into the slides a bit uh, faster. I might try to slow down here and there. So it's, uh, uh, I, I, I'll try to cater to different uh, audience speeds here, assuming uh, the people who are really mat uh, mature and are very well aware. This might uh, not be new things uh, for you. There might not be too many new things. For uh, audience who are fairly new and uh, uh, un unfamiliar, it's uncharted territories. Uh, for them, then it's uh, probably a lot of learning, a lot of takeaway. So there are a quick, uh, quick, quick few things that I wanted to talk about. First was uh, secure software development lifecycle, shift left, and uh, how can we speed up our uh, security journey itself as together. So uh, I've, uh, this, this is a quick picture that just uh, gives some information uh, on uh, secure uh, software development lifecycle and their uh, counterpart phases that go on in uh, when someone mentions a secure development lifecycle. Basically, when you have software requirements, you have anti-requirements being generated, or basically you have a risk-based method to assess your requirements as your software requirements come in. Uh, this is something not uh, that not everyone does it around the world. There, are, uh, there is probably a very limited audience that uh, puts in efforts to actually do a risk-based uh, weighting of the software requirements itself. Basically, this is where your shift lift actually begins. So your requirements, having security requirements uh, being met and examined till the very end. As you go on forth until to uh, build your software, there are different phases. The design phase is where you do paper hacking exercises or threat modeling. During a uh, coding phase or uh, when a developer loves being the code monkey, that's when uh, you have static analysis uh, being uh, performed usually. Uh, this is also the time where uh, Developers can search for anti-patterns, figure out certain weaknesses in the code, and then come back and fix them uh, quickly as uh, as uh, before the product actually releases, matures, and goes to the market. And then there are several different testing phases until the deployment of the uh, product itself, which are the security counterparts. Uh, these involve manual testing phases, such as uh, penetration testing or uh, ethical hacking, as people would like to say it. Also, there is some amount of dynamic uh, time spent on dynamic analysis, basically your runtime examination of, say, a web application. So uh, you have software requirements that come in, and then finally you release a product. Between these, you have different phases. Each phase requires weighting of security. Now, 
each time when you introduce security as part of the curve, it means you're slowing down the speed in which you can reach the market. So as you slow down, it means your competitor is much ahead of you. So that's uh, one way of uh, looking at it, but that doesn't give us an excuse to not look at security or ignore security. So the idea is how can we find this middle ground? So even though we start very early shift by shifting left and uh, trying to wet our security requirements as part of the software requirements being introduced, it becomes a bit of a challenge here uh, because there are many, many phases in which security is being introduced. Some of them could potentially be bottlenecks and so on and so forth. So in reality, we are trying to move uh, from what we are seeing in real world as a web application to trying to vet the security uh, requirements at the very beginning itself. Uh, the mm -hmm. hypothesis is it is more efficient, you have higher quality and you have clear competitive uh, advantage over uh, your uh, competitors technically, but uh, uh, this is yet to be time tested. So shift left is basically a great buzzword. That's, uh, that's something that has uh, so uh, that has been sold to us all and it is true it is true you need to move early but at the same time you have to uh, find some middle ground here because moving too early or moving too late is uh, always a problem too late you have uh, problems in your software uh, maybe malicious actors start taking advantage too early you introduce a lot of bottlenecks so it's essential to find some middle, uh, middle ground here so you need to start at some point but not too early not too late there are some articles, some really interesting articles. Uh, one notably from my employer, Checkmarks. I have to be honest, it's a very relatively new article on why shift left and DevOps is really a shift center and also uh, securing DevOps. What does it mean in our context? So uh, we were looking at early, earlier uh, all the stages. So I'll give a quick summary here. So uh, let's say someone gives us a requirement saying, I need you to build an app and uh, quick question uh, also comes out saying I need your I need my app to be secure so as a developer your first question should always be around what do you mean by secure secure against what against malware or state sponsor attack so that basically clarifies a lot so are you going to build the most secure app or is it safe enough to use or do you want to do something that is you know just basically meets the requirements so I've just broken down that word here uh, build me an app uh, that resists common everyday attacks. A degree of confidence saying that I can use my app every day and it is going to work as uh, expected and anticipated uh, regardless of attacks coming in and out. Uh, should not be accessible outside of my home. Makes sense because I probably it's a sensitive app which uh, uh, I don't want anyone to access uh, the information within content within this app outside my home. And uh, finally, you can uh, say I broke the requirement down into no third parties. So potentially by that, I'd mean to say there is no third party communication. So there is no transfer of cookie or uh, advertisement coming in such that you know, people are aware uh, what I'm doing at uh, home on my own application. So uh, removal of third parties, basically privacy, addition of privacy. Now, basing, basing these, I have a strong requirement or anti-requirements against the uh, software that I want to build to consider them as secure or not secure. So it's a, it's basically a thought process where you introduce security as a first class citizen, but really early. So that's a, that's a stage zero. And I've left out some uh, Dilbert comics. So if you haven't ever read Dilbert comics, and uh, if you're interested in uh, software security, I I think you should start reading the Dilbert comics uh, around uh, software development, software engineering, software security in general. They're fun, uh, they're, they're, they're a good way to uh, get around and understand uh, uh, what are the common mis uh, assumptions that people make, uh, for instance, like, you know, blockchain and everyone wants to uh, have their software, uh, software start working on blockchain, which is ridiculous in a way. Um, so that's uh, pretty much stage zero on software requirements. Stage one, paper hacking. This is pretty much uh, threat modeling. I'll move really quickly here. So uh, my favorite threat model, there are a couple of uh, ways you, in which you can build your threat modeling exercises. Is uh, my, my favorite is uh, Microsoft Stride. So there's six different uh, items that I have to look for, uh, six different properties basically across the application. 
uh, spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information dis disclosure, denial of service, elevation of privileges across one, two, three different levels. Uh, what it means is, hey, is my application vulnerable to denial of service? Or is my user interface, uh, whichever I build an Angular or React, is it vulnerable to denial of, denial of service? Is there anything else uh, uh, like a database component that could be uh, prone to denial, denial of service? So when you go from top to bottom, you, co you cover a great degree of detail from between level ones and ones, twos and threes, uh, almost as much as to a process level on an operating system. Now, Stage two, code monkey. This is usually uh, where developers love and have all the fun, right? So they write a lot of code. They uh, enjoy some really interesting engineering problems. They finally end up producing a solution, which is the value that you're looking for. But this is also the opportunity for developers to start uh, coding, uh, start using code scan tools as they write code, scan as frequently as possible, fix uh, anti-patterns as early as possible. There are a bunch of tools on uh, the web that you can use, and uh, there are some really popular commercial tools that you can use as well. Uh, I've just let, uh, set out a few items here. I would encourage you to go ahead and do your own research. This is not an endorsement. Uh, stage three is where you test your applications for runtime analysis. This is where you try to uh, check if, uh, how is the web page working and uh, is it prone to any kind of attacks? Or how is my web service working? Can, I, can someone tamper my web service and do something nefarious, um, exploit my app maybe? Uh, there are a bunch of tools again on the internet and this is where you should be putting your efforts. As soon as you finish development, you should be moving into the test or IS space quickly testing your tool. Now this is something very commonly seen and practiced across uh, the industry, uh, but for uh, awareness sake, this is something that you should be doing uh, on, a, on a cadence basically. Uh, one of the most common tools would be say OS app, which is pretty much uh, free to set up, start shooting around on your web services or web application, find vulnerabilities, fix them, rinse and repeat. Now, stage four, Hunger Games. This is uh, usually, uh, I've called it as Hunger Games here. Uh, that's not actually the intent, uh, but this is where you perform penetration testing. Now, uh, level zero, you have performed some uh, kind of vetting on your requirements, uh, software uh, security requirements. Level one, you have bumped up, you've done paper hacking, basically architecture review and so on and so forth. Level two, level three, you have some automated tools that are trying to find vulnerabilities. Now tools are there always to help us solve certain problems. They're not perfect because human beings build them and they're prone to errors and uh, software by nature is uh, very different. It is not just stuck with these patterns. Their software is built around for human use basically. Say for instance, bank. So bank can have pages that human can look at and understand whereas a tool would not understand, hey, uh, this is a accounts page or this is a taxpayer's page, things like that. So this is where a penetration tester comes and tries to understand uh, understand the application or uh, completely break the application. You know, maybe empty out bank accounts as in the as uh, put in the picture here. But uh, usually, penetration testers uh, intent is never to cause harm, but rather to test for weaknesses only. And stage five ASVS. So uh, ASVS is from OS uh, application security verification standard, which is pretty much going to be what we're looking at uh, for remaining next of our talk. So uh, the whole idea to talk around all of these stages was to so on and so forth, uh, just make sure all of us are comfortable on what I'm trying to demo as well. And of course, there is uh, a, there are a lot of items when it comes to looking at ASPS, the application security verification standards, starting from stage zero, what we call as uh, software requirements, the threat modeling phase, so on and so forth, until the uh, verification and assurance phases uh, that ASVS mentions. I would encourage you to go ahead, read about ASVS when you can, as you can. Three different levels uh, per, uh, are available on ASVS. Level one means your application is connected onto the network, which means if you have an application which is connected up to any network, you're supposed to do certain things to secure it depending on the business context or the financial value that the app uh, contains or maybe sensitive information. And level two and level three, so on and so forth, uh, are increasing levels of severity in terms of uh, degree of security, a higher degree of security and assurance. 
Now the idea for uh, ASVS is rinse and repeat. So if you have 130 items to look at and verify, maybe in the first uh, few uh, sprints on your software development cycle, you can only do say uh, 10 items, maybe 20 items. You rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and you fulfill all the items, then you reach a maturity level. So that's where uh, OS, uh, SAM or uh, software assurance maturity model comes in. You try to verify your software for assurance. Once you complete first degree, you automatically go to the second degree, you complete your second degree, and then you reach the third degree, which means you're, it takes time for your software to mature out. You can't get a really secure app and at the very get-go. It is theoretically not possible to have that unless you're willing to spend a lot of money. So here is what I've done in my demo. I have only a few items and most of them are uh, pretty much mocks or close to mocks basically. So I have threat modeling data for one sam sample application which I've put in together. And then I have SAST and uh, SAST results just copied back into DAST, uh, the IAST basically. Let's uh, jump straight forward there. So this is how my screen looks like. Um, as I just mentioned about ASVS uh, or the application security verification uh, standard, which is broken down into several domains. Now you can see that I have different cards on my screen. Basically each card here is a different uh, domain. So you have one, which is the architecture design threat modeling, basically the first, uh, second, first stage that we had mentioned, so on and so forth. And then you can have authentication that is being usually checked across your uh, using tools like say uh, uh, check marks or OS zap during the uh, runtime phase and so on and so forth. So you can have several items that can come in and come uh, be part of uh, your uh, verification for specific domain. All of these items are pretty much uh, provided uh, through ASVS. So to populate these cards, what I'm doing right now is pulling data straight away from GitHub. There is a JSON schema that uh, OWASP provides, uh, or there is uh, existing data around what ASVS should have for each of these domains. I've just populated those uh, questions and answers here. The only, only thing that I'm doing is I'm always by default calling F5 items as vulnerable in my case, although there might be a variance of uh, measurement each time. So I, I can quickly have a look and uh, see that for level two of uh, ASVS or second degree of maturity for an application, I, I'm interested in looking at items for architecture. So interestingly, I have uh, a threat model result. So uh, in this case, I would straight away go ahead and jump to my threat modeling result and see what is going on. So I have, in my case, I, my simulation says my previous threat modeling had more chances of me being hacked versus my second simulation, basically. The second sim simulation being in green and the previous in uh, uh, blue. So so if, if you're a DevOps engineer, if you're deploying applications every day, or if, you're, uh, if you have daily releases, week re weekly releases, so on and so forth, start constructing threat models. Take, uh, take uh, AppSec personnel's uh, help, start using um, more time to uh, invest so that you can uh, construct threat models, observe the data, and start seeing where are you going. So in my case, in two runs, obviously this is a fictional app. So I can see that there is a different uh, uh, change in the uh, 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 applications, uh, paper hacking basically, or the threat modeling. I have a Danilov service as a risk item that is reduced from certain number of points, roughly around uh, 35, or 30 points uh, reduced down to 10 points. Now these numbers are basically scaled down numbers. However, uh, this gives me a better picture as I go on for, uh, so I look at a specific application day by day basis saying, hey, where is my application today? How is it uh, doing in terms of security? So as you keep releasing, you, keep, you can continuously see your improvement. So I think the idea around paper hacking exercises, try to measure your maturity from the very get-go, from the very early, early on and onwards. Now I'll quickly come back to the cards, the ASVS cards that I have. So the idea here is, hey, I've implemented 37 controls, say uh, roughly out of uh, the 41, uh, 42 here. So it means that, you know, I have maybe five more items to catch up. So in this, in my case, I have the static number five, but uh, 
the idea is you cannot have a fully mature application from the very get go. So start measuring yourself from uh, when possible and try to fix uh, fix them as you can. And you don't you don't want to be stuck down with solving hundreds of uh, different vulnerabilities. Rather, you can pick a domain, solve a domain, move forward. That way, when you rinse and repeat, you don't have to work too hard. Now I have just some quick information here saying SAS, SAS and uh, IAST or DAS basically, which pretty much have the same information here. The intent here is to quickly say that, hey, uh, my application, I uh, have cross-site scripting. I do not sanitize data. So there is a potential for exploitation to happen. And uh, also my default password is, you know what, admin. So uh, it hasn't uh, really changed. So the admin, admin is uh, pretty much existing today. And on top of this, I have some information saying that there are some high severity, low severity, and uh, medium severity vulnerabilities, so on and so forth, with some little description at the very top. Uh, the uh, idea is uh, if you have different applications, if you have, say, uh, uh, 20 different applications that you work uh, day in, day out, or maybe uh, in a given time frame, start to uh, correlate this information around the uh, code analysis, around the runtime analysis, and also the third party. So. Uh, Typically in a, in a React app, you would uh, expect yourself to see at least uh, several hundreds, if not thousands of libraries being used in the project. So let's quickly jump into that example here. I call my app as shift left. And this is something uh, many people are familiar with. Uh, you have alternatively commercial tools which offer you the same capabilities as well. So I have uh, roughly n number of packages and I have zero vulnerabilities found, which is great. So I've been focusing on building my app without any third party dependencies, but uh, the app itself is uh, broken functionality because uh, of using you know latest and greatest possible, which is a plus and minus. So yes, sometimes it is uh, uh, very common uh, because of compatibility issues, uh, developers would continue to use say vulnerable libraries, but you need to know the reason why you want to have a vulnerable library. Now in my case, of course, uh, the only user of this application is uh, just anyone connected onto my Wi-Fi, which is fair enough. Uh, but uh, the idea is uh, today I know my uh, code analysis results and IS results here, which are pretty much mocked out. And uh, I also know in which domain am I performing good. Uh, based on these results and based on the threat modeling results, I can then quickly correlate and say, okay, I'm improving the app security from uh, N, uh, wherever it is, to wherever I'm going to tomorrow. So it's a measured and a, a very uh, meticulous way of saying, okay, you're actually improving the application. Where are you imp improving the application? What is making the difference? So. Uh, in short, uh, when you when you continue to collect data from uh, your automated tool set, say uh, for code analysis using say check marks or uh, Covarity or Veracode, whichever it might be, or your IS tools like say uh, Rapid7, again check marks, uh, Seeker from Synopsys, so on and so forth, and uh, third party analysis tools uh, from say SNCC, uh, check marks and so on and so forth, then you start to uh, have uh, a better view around your application. Now all you're left out is with conducting threat modeling. The quicker you ca uh, start conducting threat modeling exercises and start correlating that data, the faster your maturity curve for your application improves. So in short, in short, what we are looking at so far is a uh, uh, for all my apps, I want to look at secure coding exercises. I want to build up some standards and checklists. Then I also want to uh, conduct some integration tests, unit tests, and penetration testing along uh, during the runtime. And then finally run some automated tools uh, such as TAS. So basically you have a full length coverage and you rinse and repeat, you improve uh, your maturity. That's pretty much the idea. Now, uh, Obviously, uh, most of the content that I'm putting here is personal opinion around, uh, specifically around shift left. Can I shift left? And I think it's a philosophical question to answer really, uh, because today shift left is a buzzword. I would say shift left is possible, but not really possible. You have to really stick to shift center. And uh, the, the logic is how far can you shift left? How, how early can you start doing security? The early you start doing security, the uh, 
uh, bottlenecks start increasing. So your speed to delivery is pretty much hurt. And this is how businesses do not operate. Uh, whether it be me uh, personally running a business in the future, maybe, or uh, any business in general, speed to market is key and speed to market is essential. Unless you have a lot of time in the world, uh, you can sit at home and be a potato, potato couch, I guess. But uh, otherwise, speed to market is really essential. So that's where uh, you're, uh, you, uh, you want to just sit in the, uh, you need to achieve a comfort zone. And that's where you, you try to achieve the best of both worlds, basically the speed of DevOps and also uh, security uh, meeting the needs and demands. And that's pretty much all uh, from me. I'll uh, leave it open for uh, questions now. In there. Um, thank you, Uday. That was an awesome talk. Um, we were listening to it and uh, it's good to see um, trying to bring those components of development and security together it's obviously really important to make sure that we do that moving forward because we i'm sure everyone's seen examples and obviously our um right hand bottom right hand uh logo at the moment is evidence of that mm -hmm. uh, of how security <laughs> and development can go wrong so uh thank you very much for uh running us through that that was awesome